Hey guys, now I am absolutely elated that the civilians from the Azov style steelworks plant are starting to be released by the Azov battalion. And I wanted to have a look at quickly at some of the media coverage that's coming out from the West, and I made a little meme here <laughs> in honor of it. Now, I wanted to discuss how I see the situation unfold. So the way I see and the way I analyze what happened is that this family, I, I will confirm that this was the first family that escaped. And if you listen to the story, I've posted the story up on my channel as well. You can translate it with um, YouTube captions, I believe. So, but I did give a summary at the bottom as well. They basically stated that they tuned into a Russian broadcast that the Russians were putting out to tell the Azov and people in the Azov steel plant that there are green corridors available for civilians or for any soldiers that wish to surrender as well. So they tuned into that and then they decided to take the initiative and and take off and they left and there's a roughly a five minute minute interview to to show you exactly what they said and I'll, I'll let you listen to that and decide for yourself so after this family left i think what happened is there was another group of 20 people which this woman was a part of um, and you can watch the clip i put out of her as well and she's Whereas that family wasn't in the videos, she's in the videos of the Azovs, and you can watch that on their channel if you if you if you wish to. And she confirms a similar thing that they were kept there, they were threatened not to leave, if not outright told that they would have some car, uh, harm caused to them by the fighters. There, it was heavily implied, um, according to them. So. A group of 20 people left after that initial family. This, this group left on their own. And then I think either the Azov fighters, they had to come to a decision because once 20 people left, most likely all the other civilians were starting to ask, well, if these people left, when can we go? And the Azov fighters basically had two options. One of them was to you know, cause an accident for these people to happen and have these people never be seen again and i'm glad they didn't go with that option because i can i can guarantee you that option was um thrown around by some people there i'm gonna play in a video in a short while to to show you why i think that and thankfully they let another 25 people go and now they've left a further 40 people out also so thank god i was so upset with the story um watching the videos that azov put out to pull at the heartstrings of people and yeah man i was upset <laughs> i wanted them out but i was upset because they were keeping them there not because there were such honorable guys protecting them as the media has said now let's have a look at some of the spin now this this story this morning earlier this morning this was on the front page but it's no longer on the front page because i think they realized this story doesn't make um U ukraine look very well and it comes up you have to like look for it but it's fair and this is the name of the article this is the title of the article and this article has been slightly changed and uh, let's see if this article has that certain phrase i'm looking for no it does not not that i can see initially but this daily Ter telegraph is pretty much the same it's like a copy of news.com.au and this looks like the initial article that I read and it has this phrase <laughs> here this phrase radio silence on the evacuation situation and this was put out by the Ukrainian government but there was there was to be radio silence on the evacuation situation now if you google search um, it comes up over here with the with the original title radio silence and in fact on news.com.au radio silence was like on the front page in massive brackets so this was the initial initial <laughs> title but they quickly changed that around and i wonder why they, do, they would want to keep radio silence i wonder why they wouldn't want to mention some of the things these civilians that are coming out have to say now this is the article from the abc and 
they did get certain quotes from a woman down here and the the quotes they give are very generic o obviously it's gonna suck being um under there they put a bit of a russian spin you know russia bad bombing them all the time and by the way i will get to this argument that johnny fd and other people obviously put out that none of this would have happened if the russian didn't invade ukraine i'm gonna i'm gonna address that argument um soon in the video but this is the spin that they're giving and this is the woman that they show you can read this article it's just fluff uh basically just how terrible yes it was terrible being kept there by the azov battalion i agree um that would that would suck but here here are some clips of this woman right here um and you can tell it's the same woman but here are some clips that came out of her now we're only getting short clips these clips are heavily edited by the russians obviously you know they, they're gonna they're gonna cut trim the fat so to speak also i'm not denying any of that but nonetheless you can you can um you can decide for yourself so here's this video let's have a look let's have a look at what she has to say none of this is in the, in, in the mainstream news article <laughs> Он вроде бы как из э, наемников, да, и он лично на связи с Зеленским. Ну, может быть, и Зеленский отдавал эти приказы, я ж не знаю. I hope you can hear that. What, she, what in essence she's saying is that there was some person there that supposedly had a direct line to Zelensky. Now, she doesn't know, we can't confirm this. This is obviously Russia trying to like you know, connect this up to the Ukrainian government, which I think they did have a part in, in, in this, a, a, a certain part, probably most likely a significant part, but they're trying to directly connect them. It could be true. So she says that there was talk of a person there having a direct line to Zelensky who was directing them. Um, I don't know how much sway necessarily Zelensky has, but I'm sure he has a certain influence on the situation, but... That's another video I will show you <laughs> eventually. Um, but here's another here's another quick clip clip of this woman, and this is from the evacuations. And she's there's actually a, a couple of short interviews for this one. Two, three, maybe go. Even with the buses, I was very tired. But they took us back. They didn't let us go. We were all confused. How can we hold us if we are not voluntary? We were forced to hide from the buses. Нам было страшно, мы бежали, нас, например, сын туда завез, потому что мы как раз на конце восточного живем, здесь вот на краю. So she says that even though there was very little uh, activity in certain points, they still wouldn't let them go, and she was getting dismayed about how they could keep the Azov fighters, how they could keep civilians there, but in essence hiding behind them. That's what this woman says. No. Нам страшно было. Но они сами приходили и говорили военные. К нам в бункер приходили азовцы и говорили, да, что мы вскрывали квартиры, мы туда заходили. Они ругались на нас, что э, вы про российский город. Вот мы заходим в квартиру, почти в каждой квартире российский флаг висит. Ну, это нам такое приходили, рассказывали. Честно говоря, у меня в квартире российский флаг висел, как украинский принцип. И мало у кого из моих родственников или знакомых он висит. Now, what that woman says, again, I hope you can hear it, I'm not sure about the sound quality, but what she says is that periodically, some of the Azov fighters would come in and get upset and get agitated at these people and tell them, you guys are in this Russian-loving city, and we, when we set up our firing positions in the civilian buildings <laughs> that we break into to set up our firing positions, we find lots of Russian flags and, you know, Russian paraphernalia there. So you guys are pro-Russian. And what, how I interpret this is that the Azov fighters were working themselves up. We're trying to dehumanize the civilians that we were keeping in this plant so that they could take them out. If they take them out, maybe they wanted to do other nasty stuff to them. But um, I think that's what was going on. So these people were trying to work themselves up into hating these people and wanting to basically kill them because I think they knew 
either at the back of their minds or the front of their minds that when these people come out, the story that they would share would not necessarily reflect good on them. Now, I want to give credit where credit is due. They didn't kill these people, which is, um, that's, you know, however little that is, that's something I can say for the Azov fighters. It, they very somewhat, uh, very lightly redeemed themselves in my in my eyes, but... And I'm very happy for they didn't kill them. So, and I don't, I don't want people to die. So we have to give credit where credit is due to the Azov fighters that they didn't outright murder these people, even though they held um, them hostage and hid behind them backs to save their own skin. These heroes of Ukraine, and um, I think it's almost like uh, the whole situation is almost like a metaphor for everything that's going on in Ukraine. <laughs> if you if you think about it, but uh, it's it's. Like tragic and sad, and in the end, it's gonna end up with, um, yeah, you know, you, yeah, I think Ukraine losing, but you know, people have other points of view, and that's just gonna drag the fight more and more, and it's gonna create more horrible situations like this. But I'm happy this situation is uh, coming to a good, conclusive end. I don't know how many civilians suffered there, or how many people were killed throughout this ordeal or how many people are still stuck this family said this there could be up to 300 and i don't know if that's all civilians or it's a mixture of civilians and um militants there but anyway i'm happy up to 100 people out i'm really happy with that very happy so i'll leave it at that thank you guys and all the best bye